Good morning, everybody. Um, dear friends all over the world and uh, followers of Lion, we start today with a presentation of, uh, well, something special, because this year was a very special year uh, for otology. Um, in the beginning of this year, uh, one great man uh, passed away. And uh, I would like to, uh, to, to focus on him in this presentation, because he was the one who started it all, uh, the all surgery on otosclerosis and staple surgery. So uh, <clears throat> it was John Joseph Shea who passed away at the age of ni 90 years on, uh, sun on Sunday, February in, uh, in uh, well, 2015, surrounded by his family. Let's talk about <clears throat> John Shea. John Shea, he was born, uh, as I told you, in 1924. Uh, he was the third child of six children of Joseph, his father, and Catherine, his mother. He graduated uh, from the Christian Brothers High School and attended the university in uh, Indiana. He was admitted to the Harvard Medical School at the age of 19 and completed his training in Massachusetts on the eye and ear infirmary in Boston. He served the USA Army in the Korean War, and then he returned to, to Memphis um, after his father passed away, and he took over the ENT practice. And here you see the hospital of those days. And, but he was very interested, and he was a young uh, active guy, and he uh, was interested in the work of Samuel Rosen. And Rosen was just in the beginning of the 50s, the one who started the mobilization of the stapes in otosclerosis surgery. And so he visited him, and the Rosen advised John Shea to go to Vienna, to the, 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 the base of the ear surgery of the, of the 19th century to practice temporal bone dissections and to learn stapes mobilization on cadavers. This was the clinic of the former uh, Adam Pollitzer, which you see here in this picture. On February in 1954, he traveled to Vienna and he visited the clinic. He assisted Gerd Bergian during his surgery for fenestration and otosclerosis, and in his spare time, in the night times, he studied all the old work of the famous persons of the 19th century, the pioneers of ear surgery uh, in the library of uh, Vienna. Here you see some of those uh, uh, pioneers like uh, John Kessel, Frederick Fly, Fleck Jack, Karl Passoff, and Rudolf Panzer. It is probably Rudolf Panzer who was the one who was the one who first came up with the idea of taking out the uh, stapes, but also placed something to cover the oval window and after extraction of this uh, the stapes, try to reconstruct it by a prosthesis. Um, so we go on with this paper. And the classic work of Johann, Johannes Kassel from <coughs> Grass and the publications of Frederick uh, Fleck from uh, Boston uh, impressed uh, John Shea. And these pioneers had already mentioned that it was possible to take away the stapes without losing hearing function. So after his stay in Austria, John Shea performed stapes mobilizations and fenestration surgery in his practice in Memphis. Triggered by a publication of Howard House in LA uh, on a new technique on the mobilization of the stapes, John Shea decided to visit for a month uh, Joe, uh, Howard House in LA. But instead of staying one month in LA, John Shea stayed for six months, so he learned a lot from Howard House. And during his uh, talks after the day's work and the surgery, they discussed the possibilities of the removal of the otosclerotic stapes and by replacing the stapes by a prosthesis. So keep in mind that already Panzer in 1897 mentioned the same thing. 
<clears throat> so it all started maybe the idea started in the LA clinic of Howard House. House was a little bit critical about the, the technique and the, 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 the treatment of otosclerosis by removing the stapes. But he said, any idea is better than no idea at all. And too many people have no ideas at all. So back in Memphis, after his stay in LA, uh, John Shea started to develop a stapes prosthesis. On September the 14th, in 1955, he performed his first stapes removal and covered the oval window by subcutaneous tissue. Thereafter, he placed a piece of cortex bone, which he got from the Campbell Clinic Bone Bank, as a prosthesis between the oval window and the ink, as you see it here on the slide. <clears throat> the initial result of this <clears throat> was good. The patient uh, hearing got better. But, and there was no vertigo at all. But after a while, the hearing function got worse and there were signs of reaction of the cortic bone prosthesis. So John Shea decided to remove it and the patient got a hearing aid. We can consider this as one of the, the first stapes reversion uh, <coughs> surgery ever. Together with Harry, Harry Trees, from the Richard Factory <coughs> Company in Memphis, John Shea developed a stapes piston. And you see here on this slide, you see on the left side the type of prosthesis which Harry Trees uh, <coughs> made in, in a weekend. And uh, he made 30 of those uh, prosthesis in that weekend and gave them to John Shea. And John Shea, on the 1st of May, he implanted the first stapes prosthesis in a 54-year-old woman after removal of the whole stapes uh, after mobilization. To mention it, the oval window was sealed by a uh, vein graft. So that, that was the initial technique of those days by John Shea. John Shea presented his first results on the triological society meeting in Montreal, but the old boys like Lampert and Rosen were not impressed and many of the colleagues criticized the dangerous act of, doc of the young Dr. Shea for his treatment of otosclerosis. For example, he gave a lecture and uh, in the lunchtime, nobody likes to sit next to this young man who just performed this interesting new surgery. Uh, I couldn't get anybody to have lunch with me, he said, later on, and I tell you that. Only <coughs> Howard House embarrassed the new treatment of the meeting. After the first positive results and publications on the surgery stapedectomy, uh, this technique became uh, worldwide the treatment of choice for autosclerosis. And the success of John Shea uh, <clears throat> was got growing. He made a lot of new techniques and uh, prosthesis, as you can see here. And uh, he also reached the public papers. The peak of his fame came in 1962 with uh, <clears throat> this publication, which was put down in Life magazine. And here you can see him whispering on a patient who has just got a uh, stapes prosthesis, and you see, uh, he said, can you hear me now? Here we have the cover of the Life magazine, and he was also on the cover of this magazine in the right corner below. Uh, and he was one mentioned in say, the takeover generation. One of those people were mentioned. Afterwards, in the London Times, uh, a publication came and he was called one of the thousand makers of the 20th century. So John Jay is really a very important and well-known person all over the world for his staple surgery. Until 1985, he worked in the Memphis uh, Eye and Ear Nose Throat Hospital, but then he built 
the present Shea Clinic in Memphis. And the Shea Clinic was the first surgical center licensed in the state of Tennessee. He worked there until 2011 when he retired, as you can see here on his dinner on that day. And you see also the Shea Clinic in Memphis here. John Shea, he got many awards and he was also a very important professor in otology in Tennessee, the University of Mississippi and the University of North Carolina and the Tulane uh, University. He also got in 1992 the uh, citation for the honorary fellowship of the Royal College of Surgeons in uh, England, as you can see him here, standing to the st statue of John Hunter, one of the famous uh, surgeons of the 18th century. Since the invention of the stapes prosthesis by John Shea, stapedectomy or stapedotomy is now the surgical treatment of otosclerosis due to the fixation of the stapes. Operation is performed worldwide with a few changes to the classic John Shea's procedure. John Shea uh, performed about 25,000 stapedectomies during his whole career. So, thanks to the foresight and the fortitude of this revolutionary day, idea of how to treat otosclerosis, John Jay introduced millions of people all around the world have been able now to hear normal again after a successful stapes operation. So, I think it was for this special lion uh, occasion to focus on his fantastic work which we now all follow and we now see today in all types of stapes surgery for autosclerosis. John Shea, he died peacefully at the age of 19 years at his home and he was buried in February the 14th in <coughs> this year in the Calvary Cemetery in Memphis. So I'd like to thank you for your attention and so with this uh, historical information about the one who really made the stapes surgery uh, for us. Uh, it, I would hope that you have a nice and a good day on stapes surgery for otosclerosis. Thank you for your attention. Okay. Now we can...